So I'm just re-looking at this Boonton 4200RF microwatt meter. I worked on this previously a while ago. They've actually finished the repair. I just stuck it underneath my desk and it's been sitting there for about a year now, which is why you can see there's a little bit of dust on the thing. Anyway, it didn't quite work. I, I, I think I was working on it live stream or something like that. I think it might have been. I may not even record a video on it. I don't actually remember. I may have recorded a video, but I probably did. So I've just pulled it apart again. I pulled the bottom cover off, pulled this panel off here, reseated all the ICs. I already recapped it all previously, fully recapped the whole unit. Every capacitor has been replaced, apart from tantalums. All the electrolytics have been done. In this top panel here, I normally have the GPIB card here, which I've slotted out. It's got these weird board edge connectors here, which has got like a connector which goes on the side. It's got like a flex that runs down there. It's a little bit interesting. And once you get that panel out, you've got this board in here. Now this is the one I'm interested in now. I do remember that I never quite finished this thing because I had these batteries over here. Both these batteries are dead. Now fortunately, the service manual I can find for this unit, the only service manual I can find for this unit, is for the S21 version, so it's 4200-S-21 slash is the model number. It's the only one I can find. This is not that model, that's a later version. I think that's like serial number 975 and above or something. And the serial number on this one is 904. Probably can't see it too well there, but 904 is a serial number on this unit. So this is an older unit. They actually changed this section of the circuitry when I did that revision. So the later one doesn't have these three chips here. Or five chips it doesn't have here. Something like I think it's only got two chips here instead of five. And it's got a single battery instead of two batteries. So it doesn't actually match. So I can't actually use that as a reference to say, oh, what should it be and that sort of stuff. I can take a guess, but we've got these two batteries in it and they're both measuring flat. They're both zero volts. I'm thinking that's probably why it doesn't work properly because, well, you know, the batteries are flat and it's lost calibrations or the calibrations potentially screwed up, you know, it's just garbage. I need to get these batteries out, figure out what they are and replace them with something else. Yeah. So let's get these things out of here. Fingers crossed it will work. So like I said, these are flat anyway, so there's no point taking precautions about losing data or anything. The data's already gone. So I'm going to put some fresh solder on here to make them easy to get them out. I mean, there's a be leaded solder anyway, this age would be leaded solder. But freshening it is always a nice thing to do. It does help. Right. Like I said, I've got no idea what these actually are. I need to figure that out. Negative is towards the side panel there. I believe they're in series together, so I think they're probably one half volt batteries. There we go. So both these batteries are three volt batteries, so it's another G04 slash 12. So three volt batteries, okay, so it takes six volts across here. And there is a series connection between these two cells here. So this one's a six volt pack. So my guess would be it's basically replacing a five volt rail. So when it's powered down, this is supplying five volt to these two RAM chips here. Um, that'd be my guess. Can I use a lower voltage? Hmm. I might actually have two cells I can put in there anyway, but that's a lot of money because these things are like 20 bucks each, 20, 30 bucks each, these cells. That's a lot of money put into it. Well, I've had a look through my stash. I've got some brand new 3.6 volt lithium cells. Not quite exactly the same, but they're very similar. They're slightly higher voltage. I've also got some nickel metal hydride 2.4 volt cells. These are meant for in circuit mounting, mount them on a PCB. With these 80 milliamp hours. What are these ones here? Don't know don't think they actually state what they are. They're going to be lower capacity. Does it matter? I mean, maybe? I don't know. I'm thinking I might put these ones in, put a couple of those in, because it'll be a lower voltage and it should still be okay. I mean, yeah, I might have to look at the circuitry around it, see if I have to drop voltages down or do something to compensate for those batteries. I'm not sure. There's a transistor in here in a socket. But that goes to ground. Those are in series. This goes it looks like Tidu's resistor here and over to here. So that probably then goes to the VCC line of these devices, maybe. I mean, there's another diode there. It's interesting. It's an interesting arrangement, but I wish I had the circuit diagram for it. But. So one thing I can do is because of these 
pole spacings. This is connected to that one, right? You can see the track on the back of the board there running up. So that and that is the same terminal, which means I'll stick one across there like this. Convenient. And then that's because those two are the same terminal, I'll just stick one across here as well. That would work. It'd be a bit confusing for the next person, but that would work. I'm going to solder that straight on there and straight on the other one. That would be sufficient, I think. See? That works beautifully. There's the first one in there. Alright, so I've got those two batteries soldered in there now. I'll just measure the voltage and it's now it's 5.1 from positive to negative, so that's okay. It's 5.1. It's still one volt down from the original batteries, but it should be adequate. Now, what I did notice, actually, when I hooked up this second battery, as it touched, this LED just very quickly flickered, like just flashed on very quickly. So I guess that shows that it's got power or something, as it's probably charging up a capacitor or something else around this area. So that did flick on and then it went off again, off the battery power. So there's obviously as a circuit equilibrium happens. In theory now that should at least have backup RAM. Does this mean it works? Well, I don't know. This is the cover which normally sits over it. That's what it warns you about. Yeah, because you don't accidentally, you know, fry your RAM or anything, would you? There you go. There's the cover back in place. Now I'm going to put reinstall GPI on the board and we'll try it back out. Right, let's power this thing up. Switches off. It's got some errors going on here. Channel 1, channel 2, channel 3. The problem is I don't know how to use this thing, but I think this is wrong. And the full scale meter is probably a bad sign too. Although I've done the batteries, it looks like it's got some issues going on. Shouldn't be doing channel 1, channel 2 at the same time, should it? It should just be switching between channels. I think you should push that button there and it should switch between each one. I think I'll probably need to get a head on this thing and see what's going on, but I don't think you should have channel 1, channel 2 up at the same time, especially when it's only got one channel. So, a little bit of time later. I've still got this issue we've got two indicators on here. I don't know what's going on. I mean, this seems to indicate some kind of error or alert or something, but I can't find any reference to what this actually means. If you know what this means, please let me know. I'm in a bit of a dark, really. But I've made some progress. I've been putting the manual, manual calibrations back in again. Calibration constants have been putting them back in. Now, one of these things in the manual mentions that if you remove the right-hand side panel from this thing, which is down here, now take the tilt and barrel off, you just take the four screws out and you slide the panel off. Inside there is the original calibration record for this unit. This is kept inside it. Now, this one is from 1983. The 23rd of February, 1983, is when this was done. And here's all the cow data. So I went through and just manually put all of this back in again. Now this is actually for the 4200-4E sensor, which is actually what I've got. Now I don't know if the sensor is the, is the same one. It doesn't specify a um, serial number, which is a shame. I do know the serial number of this head, but um, yeah. But anyway, I've gone through this, put in all the data manually, and now I'm getting some readings out of it. But it's still not right. Like I said, I don't know if these calibration constants I've put in here match his head. I haven't actually cross-checked that. I should actually cross-check and see if it looks like it's about right or not. As you can see I've got my calibrate here which I recently fixed. That's outputting currently. Minus 20 dBm. We're getting minus 20 dBm. Minus 30. It's correct. Minus 40. Minus 50. It will kind of get there. It's, because it's a thermocouple based system it has a bit of stabilisation time. But it will basically get to minus 50. It's pretty much there and minus 60 and again same deal will gradually get down there and basically work there we go it's got a set of time and it's basically almost exactly right so at least I know the minus 60 through to minus 20 appear to be working if I do some power levels instead so you've got 1 nano watt it's slightly low 10 nano watts yeah so it's doing in that range instead 100 nanowatts. Yep, sitting slightly low. Again, it could be because of the calibration constants aren't actually for this particular sensor, and so it's going to be reading very slightly out. 0.1 microwatt, basically there. 10 microwatts is basically there. 100 microwatts is wrong. So this is saying 1 milliwatt. So there's something going on with this ranging on this particular one here. And if I do 1 milliwatt, it says it's out of range. It's just not working. And the same for 10 and 100. 
it just isn't detecting those at all. So basically up to minus 20 dBm is working on here. So I've got some progress but it's still something not quite right here. Could be some more calibration problems, it's entirely possible. We'll figure it out. And just to prove it's not the cable or the sensor or the calibrator which is causing this problem with these readings, I've got my other unit here set up, so that's minus 40 dBm, minus 30, minus 20, minus 10, 0, plus 10, plus 20. Alright, so as you can see, that is all working absolutely fine. So that means the unit here is definitely one that's got the problem above minus 20 dBm.